Hi, my name is Jarvis Williams. I'm with the Kianta Township. Uh, my question is for, I guess it could be for any one of the members, but probably more directed to Mr. Mr. McCoy. Um, I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago, um, the Arizona Rural Development Conference, and one of the things that they brought out was the Hispanic purchasing power um, it has in the state of Arizona. And how if they could market or tap into that market, that the businesses in Arizona, they could, they could actually pull themselves out of the recession. <clears throat> so I'm wondering, since you just made mention about the, how many economic development studies you guys do, I'm, I'm wondering, and this would probably be addressed to all, all the panel members, if you guys had any, uh, read anything about the purchasing power of, of tribes, of native people in general. Um, I know from the area that I come from, you know, it's two hours to the nearest place, but, you know, all, of the, all the border towns are, are doing very well. Um, even during the recession, construction growth stopped. You know, it slowed, but retail sales kept pace, you know, and, and a lot of that's probably attributed to uh, a lot of our dollars being, you know, leaked off to, to the border towns. And so I'm wondering if you guys had any insight into that. Yeah, uh, retail is tough. Uh, we've been successful at their Tulalip. Uh, one of the things, um, during the normal day of the week, we at Tulalip get over 30,000 visitors. During the weekend and holidays, we exceed over 50,000 a day. And most of this is retail and naturally gaming. But uh, <clears throat> the uh, one... Um, the question was asked earlier about the buying power of tribes. No one tribe has the power to make that happen. We'd have to create a consortium of tribes to work together, uh, almost like the, um, the Alaska corporations. A number of them pulled together to create some buying power. You know, that's what we need to take a look at, and we need a number of tribes to be able to pull together to create a joint corporation, if you will, in order to get the buying power to drive these costs down. Because if one tribe does it, they don't have the buying power. And as what we need to do to be successful, we got to be another Walmart. That big in order to get those prices so that we can use the product in our... So that's what we need to do. That's how I see it. Um, at the Osage Nation, we had... Um, um, we were looking for uh, a way to kind of uh, manage exactly how big of an economic footprint that we have in our community. And we had searched high and low, and we looked for the, the person that could actually pull it together, that had the right level of expertise, that had a great sense of depth in Indian country, knowledge uh, from an economic standpoint. And um, we couldn't find anybody, so we settled for Jonathan Taylor to actually do it. And, um, and he, <laughs> well, that, that went over better than the Kennedy jokes. Did you like that? got to roll, Steve. So Jonathan Taylor walks into a bar and, uh, not, <laughs> all right, not, no, Why not? <laughs> but we had a, uh, um, we had a really good um, analysis done because not only were we able to calculate the royalties that the Osages received from their oil and gas revenues, we also were able to calculate the uh, economic functions of our casinos. We had five casinos at the time, now we have seven. And uh, we also calculated the uh, multiplier effect of the employees that work for the tribe and, the, and their expenditures in the economy. And, and then we also were able to do the direct purchases that the tribe makes in contracting and uh, subcontracting out for a variety of goods and services. So collectively, you know, some really important achievements were made in that, that report, which was that uh, um, the total economic impact that the nation had generated was 200, this is direct economic impact, it was uh, $222 million a year. We have also we're able to identify that the nation um, employed uh, 1,400 people, and um, 
those individuals, some lived on the reservation, some didn't, so we had to figure that into it. The royalties that the Osage's uh, shareholders received that year um, was in the neighborhood of like $56 million a year. And uh, the purchasing power of the Osage Nation was measured at like $78 million a year. Now, you, you know, if you don't have the context, that, that doesn't help you much. So what we tried to do is, and this is what I think was pretty effective, what Jonathan did in his report, is that he measured us against other um, large employers in the state's economy. One of the largest employers in the state's economy in the private world is Devon Energy, which is a publicly traded company in, based in Oklahoma City. Uh, also was um, Kmart, or Target, I think it was. And, uh, and, and so, in a way, it made it possible for us to not only have empirical information that we could share with others, you know, like uh, editorial boards, the Tulsa World or the Daily Oklahoman. It also allowed us to have conversations with industry, uh, the financial institutions to talk about ways in which we could compete, we, they can compete for our business. Other goods and contractors that actually delved into a new uh, organization that resulted in a, um, a meeting that we have once a year called the Osage Business Owners Conference. And we're trying to build entrepreneurship and uh, try to get people to uh, start their own companies, form under the LLC, uh, work with the LLC, form corporations, join partnerships, but also basically effectively compete for the dollar that the Osage Nation is spending anyway every year. And uh, it spun off a lot of different things. And personality, well, personnel wise, it gave people a sense that, that you're working for an organization that's really going somewhere. And, and it really did charge them up because, you know, we went from 200 employees in 2002 to 1,400 in 2007. And now we're like at 1,700 now. And that's a lot of, that's, that's covered a lot of ground in a very short period of time. And, uh, so if you, if you, but it starts with having that, that study done and being able to make sure all the records are available to Jonathan. Otherwise, he will never leave you alone. And, uh, um, and it took a while to get it all together. But once we did, he was able to plug the numbers, do the analysis, and do the reports, and present the material for us. And it's been extremely well received by everyone in the non-Indian community as well as our own folks. Okay, they're going to pinch me at one minute. Um, on John's remark, and went back to the last panel about, you know, um, the purchasing power thing. That's what needs to happen. They do that on, on, on Vegas on the Strip. Everybody buys from one vendor. They get pricing. We're stupid if we don't do it. That's, just, that's the way that is. And I think on the local side, the policy, John says, we write the rules. So uh, Norbert used to do these speeches. When you play in, we play in your playground, we play by your rules. When you come in our territory, in our playground, we need some rules. And part of it's policy. And uh, as the Asian community would say, everything joint venture. Everything joint venture. So every service and good that's purchased needs to have an Indian component. If they don't have that, next. They'll get an Indian division or hire or train or whatever, but to leverage your purchasing power, then you know, they can play by your rules. So. And, then, and then measurables on the council side, just to, you know, every quarter it's a certain percentage that's realistic. And then bring your purchasing agents in to in front of the council and say, did you meet the threshold? If so, we did. If not, why not? And what are you going to do to correct that? Because we've got to go that extra mile. I should do this, these speeches on Indians should act more Jewish. So that's one thing to do. They use their own people, right? They're going to buy a table or a chair or a good or a service. They're going to look to their own people first. They're not going to go into another community and, and use those people. That's what I mean. That's a good thing, you know. We need to use our own people and have confidence in them. Thank you.